New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap. Good morning. And if you're having a birthday coming up soon, if you'd like to get a book signed by Mr. Gilstrap, just send him an email. Oh, and yeah, the generous individual Don't do this. is. Don't, Don't do, do this. this. Birthday, Christmases, Christmases, whatever case, he reaches the depth of his heart to be responsible. Generous man. You're going to elaborate more on this. And only In the 9 o'clock <laughs> hour. Yeah. In the 9 o'clock hour, yes. All will become known, full disclosure, in the 9 o'clock hour. Here. And John will excuse himself long before that. <laughs> no, he won't. <laughs> the door locks from the outside the, in the 9 o'clock hour. Uh, Joy, <laughs> stop listening. <laughs> <laughs> she probably did that quite some time ago. Uh, Berkeley Community Pride is an organization that is, uh, I'm, I'm sad to say, something we have to come to grips with may not be uh, uh, continuing for a little while here. And, uh, Bill, you were very important in the creation of Berkeley Community Pride. Maybe you could take a couple of minutes to talk about it here. Yeah, um, in 1999 or 2000, uh, it doesn't, any residence in Berkeley County is struck by the amount of roadside trash. Uh, and and it's, I don't want to blame the whole community. There's just a small element. Uh, but that small element lets their, their habits be known. Uh, when Bonnie and I first moved here, we fell in love with the area. We fell in love with the people, uh, but we were struck by the amount of roadside trash. And there were programs working, uh, uh, Adopt the Highway. Uh, but Adopt the Highway picks up, uh, picks up alongside a road maybe four times a year. And within a few days after it's picked up, uh, then the, uh, the trash starts accumulating again. So I think uh, probably uh, early 2000s, uh, Jerry Mays, uh, uh, Jerry Kramer, I think perhaps Bill Klingensmith and I and, and Maria Lawrenson uh, were all got together and said, what can we do to address this? And that was the genesis of Berkeley Community Pride. Initially, it had three functions. Uh, one was immediate or, or direct pickup. The second one was uh, was education with the uh, with, uh, with with the public and also the schools, and third one was law enforcement. Uh, working close at that time with Randy Smith and Kenny Laymaster, uh, there was uh, uh, the sheriff's department had a lot going on, uh, and they did not want to pick up uh, or take on the responsibility of becoming roadside litter monitors, if you will. So that kind of fell to the side. But we had a very active involvement with the schools for several years. Uh, we uh, participated in, their, in some of their uh, competitions for uh, for student uh, student uh, projects, uh, we always we gave money through the art schools, art classes for pictures that would address environmental mediation. But the big thing was uh, was uh, direct pickup on roadside litter. On one day of carrying, we had 120 people out picking up the roads, uh, a sizable number, and we made a big dent that uh, that time. Uh, we also, get, thanks to Bill and Quad Graphics, we started the the monthly, or now the every other month, uh, bi-monthly, uh, recycling the paper. Uh, and as Bill and Peter will mention in just a couple of minutes, uh, things have changed. Uh, one, we're getting a little bit older. Uh, we don't get out and pick up uh, alongside the road, except for Peter, uh, as, as readily as what we used to. Also, the county has stepped up big time, uh, thanks to uh, uh, Doug Copenhaver, uh, Eddie Gokenhauer, and the group. They implemented a county pickup. Uh, Mike Lang has a group on the on the road, probably two or three times a uh, a week picking up trash now you as the listeners say well it's not being done very it's not being done effectively when you consider the 100 i think 130 140 different roads in the county and just one group picking up i think they're doing an admirable job but there's a lot more to be done well that's a lead-in then i like to turn it over to my two colleagues yeah, peter house and bill klingelsmith good morning to both of you thanks for coming in well you're very welcome it's thanks great to be here yeah. You guys always talk in tandem like a students in stereo in my ears. Yeah. Well, you know, Berkeley County Pride has, you know, been over 20 years working to, um, again, uh, raise environmental awareness, uh, reduce litter, and um, uh, advocate for 
recycling. We've had these recycling uh, efforts uh, uh, with uh, great partners, Quad Graphics, and over the last year, uh, BPG USA. Um, but you know, the, the recycling w that was a way for us to generate money, and and uh, that money from the recycling would come to the uh, organization, and then we would um, have these programs with the uh, the schools and and uh, uh, trying to uh, get everybody to be more aware of their environment and, and how to uh, to treat it properly. Um, Bill can probably, because he was the former uh, quad guy, he can talk about some of the, the results from that. But, uh, you know, it's kind of like as pe with people, uh, sometimes organizations need to know when to retire. And, mm -hmm. uh, and you looked right at me when you said that, uh, <laughs> Peter. Well, you know, Bill would have given me a heart. We would have given me a, a dirty look. But uh, it's, uh, it is, you know, we've done a great job, I think, over the last 20 years. Um, the county has stepped up. Um, yeah, the roadside. Uh, literally, I, I met Bill in 2000. I, I moved to the county in 2016, and kind of after I got settled in, I started looking around and go like, "What is going on here with this trash?" So mm -hmm. I started picking up up along Scrabble Road in Carlisle and in that area. And uh, one afternoon, I was out there, and Bill stopped. He was driving by, and he recruited me into the organization, and um, you know it's been it's been great. It's a great small group of people, but everybody has been uh, just uh, very focused on trying to make the Berkeley County clean and green. Well, and, I'm just grateful Bill didn't run you over as he was driving by <laughs> on the road there. Yeah, well, he wasn't in his, his sports car. He at that point, he but. was picking up litter, Rob. I have a lot of respect for that person picking up litter. <laughs> I gave him a wide berth. Wide berth. <laughs> very good, Captain. Yeah. Uh, Bill. Well, my story is actually uh, somewhat similar because I, too, was recruited by the Admiral. Um, with me, I, uh, I worked at Quad Graphics, as Bill mentioned, and uh, the founder of the company, Larry Quadrachi, he used to fly into the Martinsburg Airport when we'd have important clients into the, in, the, in the plant. And, and I would go to pick him up. And I'll never forget the first time I picked him up, he gets in the car and we're driving back to the plant and he looks around and he says, uh, he said, there's a lot of trash in this, this county. And I said, yes, unfortunately there is. He said, what are you doing about it? And I said, well, you know, from a plant standpoint, we get a lot of the employees involved and we do do some pickups. And he said, you need to do more. And, uh, and he goes, this, uh, from, a, from a work perspective, um, potential clients come into Berkeley County and they see this trash and they say, well, if you can't take pride in your own home, what kind of pride are you going to take in my job? So he said, this is really important that you get involved in this. So um, Bob Crawford was actually the director of the um, Development Authority at the time. And I reached out to Bob and I said, hey, we've got a couple of little things going on, but how, to, how can we at Quad do more and he said uh, I've got just the person that you need to talk to and he set up a lunch and it was with uh, Bill Stubblefield, Jerry Mays and I think Jerry Kramer was there mm -hmm. also and I listened to these three gentlemen and they actually had this um, this organization in place by that time and they were just growing and, and they were starting to get more volunteers on board and it looked like just a great fit for us at Quad. So that's how we came in, in, involved. Uh, specifically with the recycle drives, uh, as you know, uh, Quad's a huge printer and we, we printed just millions of magazines and, and catalogs and flyers every month. And uh, we got together and we said, well, what do people do with these, you know, when they're done? They take them and they throw them in the trash and it ends up in the landfill. And so we sat there and said, well, maybe we can put this together where people can bring this in and then we can take, because there is a market for recycled paper, we can take, sell the paper and then give all the proceeds back to this, this uh, group, uh, Berkeley Community Pride. So everybody got on board, we approached BCP and they said, you know what, it sounds like a good idea. Uh, as Bill mentioned, our first pickup was uh, on the day of caring. I think we ended up getting, what do you think, Bill? Was it like 20 pounds of magazines or maybe 22 pounds? Yeah, it yeah. wasn't much, yeah. but we got the word out. And the very next 
uh, month when we had it, uh, you know, people in the county started to respond to it and bring in a, a, a lot more of their uh, newspapers or magazines and everything like that. So, and Bill, if I could interrupt, yeah. we have a regular cadre of folks that have been joining since that one first day. Every time we have a uh, recycling pickup, they're there. And one guy even drives from Pennsylvania. Absolutely, uh, yeah. So. Yeah, he was a Berkeley County resident yeah. who ended up moving to Pennsylvania, yeah. and uh, he still will c come in, and yeah. he just thinks uh, it's, a it's a great way to do it. So it, it was, and as Peter mentioned, it was a great re uh, revenue stream for us to allow us to do a lot of the litter pickup and a lot of the education component that, uh, that was part of BCP. Um, at the end of the day, I think we ended up, by, well, I know we ended up, uh, we collected more than a million pounds since, uh, yeah. since the inception. Yeah, one of our early days of actually picking up litter, we went to North Mountain. And uh, there is a, over the years, a phenomenal amount of trash just dumped over the side. We literally used ropes to repel mm -hmm. down to pick up that trash. And uh, it was just a, a marvelous amount of stuff we did. That was in our younger days. I don't think <laughs> we, we, we might get to the bottom, but we can never get back up now. But we took on some areas that were not normally picked up and uh, uh Georgetown above that we picked up that that dump on a couple three occasions right. as well is yeah. there still a revenue stream from recycled paper that market kind of yes, collapsed sir. over no. time actually um, it's still very strong is it, it is yeah mm -hmm. you know it's interesting everybody remember iron eyes Cody yes yeah from the, 1971 the, crime, the, yeah. the yeah. one one, one yeah. of the greatest living recognition everybody has yeah. seen that commercial yeah. and remembers the commercial mm -hmm. we need to bring that back you know, I live in a in a new neighborhood, essentially a construction zone. And when we think of, of those old commercials, you see the people taking their bags of trash and throwing it out the window. Um, I'm surprised by the number of untarped loads that I see going down the road, whether it's it's just a, a pickup truck with with a, a flatbed with, with rails on it and you got styrofoam flying or construction dumpsters that are also going down the road that are untarped. Mm -hmm. There's no law around here that requires tarping. Unfortunately, for like the um, like the private uh, contractors, it doesn't seem to fit. Now, Apple Valley and some of the municipal uh, 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 folks, they they are required. You see, those trucks do have a tarp that goes mm -hmm. over it. But but I know exactly what you're talking about because I had to swerve to avoid trash coming down 901 that I knew fell out of a fell out of a family trailer, probably on his way to the dump. Yeah, I think that's probably a lot of. I don't I don't think people was purposely dump stuff out as, as they used to. I think some of it is blowing out of the back of things that aren't secured. Uh, I think you're right, Rob, but I think, think there's also a lot of folks, or at least a, a group, that throws yeah. it out. Oh, yeah, because it's in the bag still. That, and you mm -hmm. can, along certain places, every day you'll find a McDonald's or a mm -hmm. beer can. It's every day the same place. Well, and some idiot dropped off a mattress and box spring yeah. at the entrance to our... Um, a building here. Well, yeah, I had to put it somewhere, somewhere Rob. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, my experience, and I pick up along the roads and in, in uh, up around the Whiting Snack area. I can take walks every day, take out a, a, a bag, and it's the same as as Bill said. It's mm -hmm. this, pretty much the same stuff in the same places thrown by the same people, whether it's cigarette butts or beer cans or bottles, cups. Um, it's uh, you know, and 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 these are people who actually live in the neighborhood because this happens all, all the time and you got to go what's Why? up with yeah. these guys and it's you know the um amount of trash that i would say is is not purposeful is probably like one percent so you really think most of it's purposeful oh yeah huh? it's okay. just same stuff same place i was hoping for better than that i i, I thought would would think so too and it's you know it is bill said the county has has really stepped up with the roadside litter uh cleanup crew but you know, it, it, in some in some places, especially in the northern part of the county, um, it seems the litter problem seems to be much more significant in this yeah. than what I've seen in the southern, and especially like 901 and Route 11 North and Berkeley Station uh, Road, and it's just you got to go. Come on, what's up with this? And I've, you know, I haven't traveled in every county in in the state, probably about half of them. And I would figure, oh, God, they're going to be even worse. You know, it's going to be just trash central. It's not. What, I mean, Berkeley, 
but unfortunately, again, especially in the northern part of the county, is, is the worst litter that I've seen so far in, in West Virginia. And it's just, it's, it's heartbreaking. I wonder what percentage of people are responsible <coughs> for the lion's share of the trash. Mm. You know, is it 2%. 50 people, 1,000 people? 1,000. Yeah, Who's out there throwing their garbage out the window because you don't respect anybody? I just anything can't imagine anybody. doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's a story that Jim Smith used to tell when Jim was a county commissioner that the governor flew up and um, and and the governor said, "Jim, you have the dirtiest county in the state." And Jim looked at the governor, kind of askance, and the governor said, "Let's hop in an airplane." So they flew over, and there was more trash. I don't know why more in Berkeley County, and but this has been going on for several years. Mm-hmm. Obviously, with our growth, that would account for some of it, but this was prior to uh, our, our rapid growth. Bill, as the county commission president at the time, uh, at one time, did you have active litter pickup by the county? No, we did not. We tried, uh, and we were going to try to use uh, pros- uh, the uh, uh, the community service or the ones in the jail. Uh, I'm going to uh, throw a, a shout out to Katie Delegati uh, and our judicial system. Uh, these folks are very much on board and working with the county commission, working with anyone else trying to abate this. Uh, this has not always been the case. Uh, I ran into some real roadblocks. Uh, when I tried to do something. I was trying to use the uh, work release from the, from mm-hmm. the uh, jails. And uh, they said, sure, uh, we'll, we'll let you do it, but you got to pay our debtors uh, time and a half, maybe three times, to go out and supervise. Uh, and then the folks have to come back in for their, uh, their lunch meals. Uh, and it just, it was, and the prosecuting attorney at the time was not really on board with this. So there was a lot of pushback. Uh, so things have changed. One, now we have a county commission uh, that have looked for ways to do it, still not using the regional jail folks because of various impediments, but using community service. And the judges, the magistrates, the prosecuting attorneys are all working very hard with the county, trying to provide some avenue well, for community what's service. What's so unique to Berkeley County that's an impediment here because you don't have to drive too far to see road crews out there all the time with but, the orange jumpsuits on, stabbing litter. But not in West Virginia. Not in West Virginia. Why, why yeah, is I, it so hard yeah, here? I don't know. I, I never got a question. The other thing I had a problem at the time is that the uh, regional jail director, director was changing every six months or so. So you'd have an agreement with one, and by the time you got ready done. to do something, they had a new regional well, uh, jail are, are the, I don't know Are if the budgets so tight that you can't hire four to six people that their job full-time is to just go pick up crap off the road? Well, we're doing that now basically with the community service. That's what that's what Mike Lang's group is doing. Hey, when when is Berkeley Community Pride shutting down for good? Uh, probably around April of next year. We're going to have one more recycling drive at BPG USA this uh, coming Saturday, and then there will be one final drive at Quad on uh, Saturday, January thirteenth. Um, and then we've got you know whatever legal and and uh, uh, accounting type of things to take care of, but mm-hmm. uh, and. Um, is there another organization that does something similar in Berkeley County that will pick up the slack, or is the county doing such a good job you don't need to be out there doing it anymore? Well, I'm not aware of another group. I mean, there are people, you know, various groups like Isaac Walton that will that that do that participate in the adopt, the, a, highway. adopt a highway, yeah. and I and I wish the adopt a highway people were a little bit more proactive in recruiting uh, organizations um, in the various areas. But I think you know they're strapped for resources. Likewise with the Department of Highways. I mean, when I would, went in a couple of years ago to look at, uh, to register my cars, I noticed uh, there's a little sign that there says $1 from every registration goes to litter control. Um, and then I kind of chased, you know, called some people at accounting, you know, their accounting and whatever. And I said, well, we just, that money just goes into whatever the general fund is for the various. So it, does, so it doesn't so really go to litter control? No. No. But there's another aspect of this. Uh, Duplicitous uh, marketing. Yeah, Clint Hogman has done a very nice job yes, of recycling. So that is an organization that is geared up considerably uh, since our early no, days. They're recycling, but are they actually picking up trash no. on the road and recycling? Well, they're not on the roads. They do pick up on the screen beds, something that uh, Berkeley Community Pride never did. Mm-hmm. But Clint's group is focused on, one, recycling, and second, screen bed cleanup. And I think they're doing a great job. And that's necessary, too. Yes. Who picks up dead critters? 
uh, the DOH. DOH, Department of Highways. And they're very responsive. If you call them, they'll have the dead critter picked up within probably a day's time. What, what we saw here in the last few years is we developed what we called uh, uh, just a litter pickup pack where it had the vests and the gloves and the little, little, mm-hmm. little pickup things. And uh, we offered to uh, loan those out to uh, homeowners that wanted to do pickups themselves. And so we got a lot of interest from HOAs and uh, like Bennington has an outdoor group and there was an outdoor group that was down on the... Uh, the public access for the stream that barred them. Um, so I think, you know, to answer your question, I, I'm aware of the West Virginia Litter Busters. I believe that organization, and that's solely uh, their their mission is litter control. They're still there. But uh, at the end of the day, it's it's really gotten down to the homeowners and, and down to the HOAs. And besides what the county has done, as we've talked. But, Rob, I and I've been looking at this very, uh, very close for the last 21, 22 years. So, uh, and Burke Community Pride, I think, made a difference primarily with paper recycling. But I'll come back to the county. I think the county has made a difference. And there's, there's still a couple of other things they hope to do. There is a a vacuum sled that goes uh, alongside the road that will enhance uh, the road uh, the roadside pickup considerably. Uh, we're in the pro- the county is in the process of looking to see if they can purchase one. If they can, the uh, Burke Community Pride has agreed to buy it for the county. Uh, so there's. Uh, uh, It'd be nice if you could have a group of 30 or 40 or 50 people uh, every weekend out picking up trash. Uh, and that was our aspiration at one time. It just We just found it to be mm-hmm. overly difficult to do. The, uh, what, what's left in your budget, Peter and Bill, at the, at the end of the existence of Berkeley Community Pride? It's not a lot. It's it's not a lot, and this money has you know just come over time through the recycling efforts. It's less than twenty thousand yeah. dollars. But well, uh, what will happen to the money once you disband? Um, well, either um, you know to help purchase this uh, uh, vacuum sled for the for the county, or it will be most likely um, donated to the West for Eastern West Virginia Community Foundation for specifically for litter and environmental. Um, efforts. Well, thanks to both of you and, and, and Bill as well for all the work you've done and helping to beautify the community. It is, as you know, you don't need me to tell you, a, a never-ending job. Uh, it is. And, you know, it, litter doesn't fall from the sky. It falls from people's hands and mm-hmm. people just have to stop doing it. But we thought originally education, enlightening, that would that would solve the problem. And I think it has for, I'm going to say, 98, 99% of the people. But we still have 1% or 2% that sure make their actions known. I, I remember being, I think I was about, I don't know, 10, 12 years old, walking along the sidewalk, mm-hmm. and I had a piece of gum put through the gum wrapper on the ground, and uh, behind me was a lady, Miss Jane Teets. I remember it to this day. <laughs> Uh, Can't imagine why. Because her, <laughs> yes, uh, and she uh, she had a kid, a couple of kids that went to the same school where that I went to, and she came up to me from behind. She said, "Excuse me, young man, this is yours. The earth is not your trash can." She handed me back my gum wrapper, and that made an impression at a very young age. We we need more Jane Teets. We do, yes. <laughs> gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here this thank morning. Thank you so much. Thank Happy you. holidays to all. Okay. Thank you, sir. You as well.